Hey, joining me is senior Axios contributor Margaret Talev and the Washington Post's White House bureau chief, Tulu Olaranipa. Thank you both so much for being here. Tulu, I want to start with you. This is shaping up to be one heck of a crowded field of GOP candidates. So many think they have a shot, even as the polls show it's really more of a two-man race at this point. Yeah, there was a time just about four or five months ago where the conventional wisdom is that you would have a small field and have one person be the Trump slayer, one candidate who could take on Donald Trump, because people saw what happened in 2016, where the anti-Trump vote was split, and Trump rode that to the nomination and ultimately to the presidency. But now, the, especially with uh, Governor DeSantis, who is in second in most polls, not really defining himself as a Trump slayer at this point, not clearing the field. You have a number of other candidates who are saying that they can take on Trump in a more effective way, that the field is wide open, that if they get some momentum behind them, that they can end up clearing the field and being the person that goes one-on-one -on -one with, with Trump. Because whoever ends up in second place has just a good, as good of a shot of taking on Trump uh, as anyone else. And so the fight really seems to be for second place at this right. point to see if they can get everyone else out of the field. Margaret, there's even buzz about J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon today jumping in. He's been coy about it in recent interviews. What are you hearing? Well, Elizabeth, you know, he's uh, contemplated publicly uh, the idea of whether he should run for president for many years now, most, recent, most recently concluding uh, it wasn't going to work for him. But I think this may be more a reflection of Wall Street's sort of apathy or um, uh, not being excited about either Trump or Biden again uh, in 2024, looking for someone who could uh, be sort of that uh, statesman and institutionalist and someone to, to lift up the economy. Uh, the trouble for Jamie Dimon, look, he's got the money, he's got the credentials, he could be broadly appealing to a general election electorate. But which uh, party would right. nominate him <laughs> right, as their nominee? And because he is, look, he said something to the effect of he's got the heart of a Democrat and the brain more of a Republican, but most likely he would have to run in the Democratic primary. Uh, and I don't see him doing anything that would attempt to topple Biden in a way that could elevate Trump. Uh, right. And so I just think that this is other people talking about it more than anything else. I do think that because of his perch since the 20, 2008 financial crisis all the way through COVID and the inflation and the bailout of banks and such, I think he actually does care about, you know, keeping America strong, does think of himself as a leader. His, his question is, can he be more effective from the outside or from the inside? Margaret, all these candidates are gunning for the evangelical vote. In the meantime, in Iowa, as we just heard in our report, 65% of the Republican caucus goers in Iowa were e identified as evangelical. Trump hit DeSantis for his six-week ab abortion ban today on the stump, but without saying what he would propose. Right. Correct. Uh, yeah, it, I mean, that 65 percent, that's nearly two thirds. That, so that shows what an outsized presence the evangelical uh, vote has in the Iowa caucuses on the GOP side. They backed Ted Cruz once upon a time. Uh, they they are actually are more favorable towards Donald Trump now than they were back in 2016. And that really tells you something. Trump's argument has been about outcome, obviously right. not about personal lifestyle or beliefs. Uh, what Trump is saying is, look, I've delivered what DeSantis and others are trying to argue is uh, that they are younger and, uh, in DeSantis's case, running further to the right, that he would be willing and able to deliver uh, more. But right now, it certainly looks like evangelicals' uh, kind of hearts and tactical minds are, are still with Donald Trump in Iowa. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.